continuation of the sanskrit in netherlands where i speak with professor peter bishop who is a professor of sanskrit in the leiden university in this episode we will see some of the very interesting books that uh, professor peter bishop has authored well skanda purana so that is my uh, uh, it's something that uh, that will stay with me for well, not forever but for a for a long time this is available online or it's only yeah no it's now uh, this is a very good uh, development i think so it's uh, as you can see it looks like a pretty expensive book yeah. it is an expensive book published uh, by brill in the netherlands oh, okay. but i've uh, yeah we've arranged uh, um, yeah to get uh, the text open access so it's uh, it's op it's uh, most of the volumes are available in open access the, the in, uh, Amazon or something? Uh, well you can find it all. so the publisher is Brill so oh, Brill uh, B R I L L publishers oh. they have it uh, online themselves uh, I have also uploaded it on my academia yeah, so oh. academia my academia page I uh, okay. I always put all my uh, material there oh, okay. yeah so this is uh, one thing, so that's the, uh, the Skanda Purana, well here's another thing that I've been, that's fairly recent, okay. uh, which shows my interest, continuing yeah, interest yeah. in Varanasi. Okay. This is uh, um, yeah, based on a manuscript, and if you see it again, a Nepalese manuscript. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's uh, based on this, uh, this palm leaf manuscript. It contains a Varanasi Mahatmya. Okay. Uh, I've edited the text and then again uh, provided with a, a synopsis and a study. The Varanasi Mahatmya of the Bhairava Pradurbhava. Yeah. yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a typical Mahatmya telling about uh, the various lingas in uh, Varanasi, oh. um, Tirtas there, okay. and uh, how they appeared mm -hmm. and what you should do there yeah very interesting yeah um what else um i can show uh, yeah this shows my continuing interest in shaivism so this was jointly published uh, with a nepalese scholar nirajan kafle and an uh, american timothy lubin uh, this is uh, about uh, the shiva dharma uh, the Shiva Dharma is the Dharma, the, the rules, or the, the, well, Dharma is a very difficult yeah, uh, yeah, word yeah, yeah. to translate, yeah. but it's, a, yeah, it's effectively, it's a, it's a text of, uh, of, of Shiva worship, how you are supposed to worship Shiva, uh, mm. very ritual, ritualistic. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so again, it's, it's something similar, you can see again an addition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty complex one, yeah. based on many manuscripts. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's also commentary on it okay. uh, with pratik, a sort of pratika style commentary with okay. uh, pratikas, mm -hmm. and then yeah, a translation and a study again. Okay. Yeah, so this is it. It kind of shows what I typically do. Yeah. So uh, edit text from uh, manuscripts and then uh, provide it with a study. Um, yeah, there are other things. Uh, which actually also shows this is another section of the Shiva Dharma. Uh, yeah, so I've so the, these two books are uh, based on individual chapters of this text called the Shiva Dharma, and then yeah, it's typically we, I, I edit it and then oh, translate it and um, okay. introduce it. So you know to read manuscripts, you must be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of my work is, uh, yeah. I mean, it's philological by nature. Yeah. So it's uh, it's based on. I start from manuscripts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a. Uh, uh, it's this this particular one is a is a chapter that, uh, as you can see, the appeasement of all gods and powers, 
it's a long shanti uh, mantra. Mm -hmm. So it's a long invocation of uh, all the gods, mm -hmm. uh, but also all powers more abstractly, for example, also all the stars and the planets mm -hmm. and uh, the sun and the moon, uh, the nakshatras, mm -hmm. uh, they're all invoked um, for shanti. Oh, the Shanti, the Shanti, is that the one? Is that the one? Shanti, well, this is a... Upper Shanti, that is... No, it's not, yeah, this is a different one. It is, it, it is in, because as you can see, it's... Uh, well, this one I didn't print in Devanagari, it's in transliteration. Uh, but it's in Shloka, yeah, so it's just... Uh, okay. It's long, it's a string of about 200 Shlokas, oh, yeah. I think, oh. uh, in which all powers are invoked uh, for Shanti. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, it's uh, from which text is that? Really? So this is again from the Shiva Dharma. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the Shiva Dharma is a text that uh, is not so well known, but it has had a huge. Uh, it was a very influential text uh, for a long, uh, long time. A, a, a lot of Puranas. If we go back to the Puranas mm -hmm. again, uh, many Shaiva Puranas, mm -hmm. uh, the Shiva Purana, for example, uh, have incorporated much material from this Shiva Dharma. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Puranas uh, often mm -hmm. incorporate materials from other texts, uh -huh. uh, put it in a sort of, yeah. Yeah, in a mixture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the Shiva Dharma has been a, has been a very Im important source for that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the Skanda is usually, we say Skanda is Shiva's son, we call him Skanda, yeah, but that's right. Yeah. The Skanda Purana is based on him or on? Yeah, him? the Skanda Purana, as uh, as the title indicates, it's uh, it's about the birth mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and it, the birth of Skanda and how he became the Senapati, the, oh. the, 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 the general of uh, of the gods' army uh, to fight uh, the demon Taraka. Oh. So uh, that is sort of the overarching narrative, uh, but yeah, it's not all. Yeah, so yeah, the, the, uh, yeah so effectively, it's uh, uh, if you look at it like more theologically, it's a text that advocates uh, that Shiva is uh, the Lord of the universe. He's Ishvara. Mm -hmm. um, he has his devoted wife Parvati, who is also extremely important in the whole uh, mm -hmm. uh, setting. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then and 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 how other gods relate to him. I mentioned the example of Vishnu, mm -hmm. uh, but also, yeah, Skanda, uh, how he uh, came to be born and acquired his, uh, his position. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I think. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so you learned uh, Sanskrit from your mother? Yeah. From a very small age I learned, okay. but later I did ME. ME. Uh -huh. And uh, two years back, I did MSc in Vedic Sciences mm -hmm. from uh, uh, MIT, IAKS, Pune. But I speak to my mother in Sanskrit only. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Because uh, there yeah. was a movement to revive Sanskrit as a spoken language, and my mother, she wanted to do it. She was actively part of it. So, so from a young age, she, uh, she, yeah. she trained you to, yeah. to teach Sanskrit, uh, to, to also speak, speak Sanskrit. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. to this day we, we converse in yeah. Sanskrit. Yeah, no, I could also, I mean, on your videos, I noticed you were very <laughs> adamant about pronunciation. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, like very adamant about it, but many people well, have, con yeah. like, they keep asking me, what is the right way to pronounce what is, so I just... Well, it is the start of it, yeah, if you, yeah. I mean, I should have said that, uh, uh, like, how is Sanskrit uh, taught? Well, the first thing is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, he, yeah. Uh, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they first of all have to uh, yeah. learn a new alphabet. That is how like the, the, the shiksha they used to yeah. So <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, okay. Professor. Yeah, it was, uh, like you gave me an opportunity to understand all this. Uh, I consider it a grand privilege actually. <laughs> thank Great. you. Thank well, you. You're welcome. <laughs>